I believe in due process. I believe in abiding the law. Okay? So something had happened miraculously. I was watching this year program, Kakaiki program, in the segment of uh, newspaper review. One of the, the guests that personally spoke on the program, that uh, journalist Simon Rip Musa, mm -hmm. the word that he opened with, it has really touched my mind and attracted my attention. You see, how will you lead the protest without the leadership? So that what has touched my mind, you know? So that what I started, this man is truly saying the truth. So I have to write by the following day. It was on 25th, so on 26th, I have to write this introduction letter. I have decided to officially declare myself, declare myself as interim national leader of the nationwide planned protest between 1st August to 10 August 2023 in order to legally put the situation under a total control. Yes, I, I, I think I've seen a copy Thank of that letter. So, and this letter was officially received by the federal government of Nigeria through the office of the executive secretary, National Human Rights Commission, the chief justice of Nigeria, you know, and the chief of staff to Mr. President, Pemi uh, Baja Biamila, including the Director General of the Department of State Security State Services, Service. uh, Dr. Yusuf Magajibichi, including the Is Inspector General of Police, IGP Ibetukun Kaede. So, before I even form this movement, because it's more than even the protest, because this is a movement and bad government's uh, movement, so it has come to stay in Nigeria. We have to be fighting for our constitutional right. The God has enriched Nigeria abundantly, but very few. Are still in the uh, 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 what God has blessed Nigerian with. Okay, so you're talking about the disparity between the rich and the poor. Now the gap is is getting wider. Exactly. So now that you have identified yourself, has there been any communication from government since you've submitted the letter? Yeah, yes, there there was because uh, on 29th that was a day before yesterday I was in the. Office of the Honorable of the FCT Minister, Mr. Nelson Wuke, where I have officially notified him we have selected Unity Fountain to be our national center for the, for the protests. Any law abiding city, that where we are going to be gathering, okay? And uh, I copied the letter to the Commissioner of Police. You know, that is um, because of the, the report that the security agency have, there is some um, miscarriage and the criminal element that preparing to hijack the, the protest to commit violence. So they have to, they, they will not even accept this letter and say you have thoroughly been uh, uh, interviewed. So the commissioner of police, I really appreciate with him because he has responded to me. The day we went and to submit the letter, he has responded to me where I was directed to the OC intelligence in the, the, uh, in the FCT police command. They have thoroughly interviewed me for more than an hour. So this is the response, and they made me to understand that the protest is not about violence. Yeah, I said, this is what we are even campaigning for. That's what I informed the, the, the Nigeria police force via, via FCT police command. So, and the, let me answer your question very clearly. When I, I, know what I'm, I know what I was doing when I call myself interim national leader, okay? Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm better than anybody. But what is the idea that I'm sending to all Nigerians? Please, let us be very wise. Let us all be very organized. Okay, we must have the central leadership. We must have the national leadership for this protest. If you want to succeed, that's the reason why I'm coming up with this. Uh, because that is something that had happened on that very Friday when I went to submit, I went to submit this letter with, to the Chief Justice of Nigeria, just to Oluka, uh, Oluka de Arwola. As I step in, into the inner premises of the, chief justice, uh, the office of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, they gave me standing ovation. <laughs> what they, it has really attracted my mind. That is the reason why I'm telling this story. They say we stand united. Of my you, that what they have started telling me. So they gave me standing ovation. Before you know it, I started dashing them a uh, new note of 500 and Nera not, you know, oh, because you gave, it has you, really attracted me. You gave gifts of money to uh, them. Exactly. That where, because if you are doing anything, you have to prepare for the challenges that you are going to face. 
I know there is some because some government official trying to just de deceive us. So they are saying they don't want us to come to, pro to protect because there is some criminal. So they had a, the primary responsibility of the government is to protect life and the, uh, and the pro properties of the citizens. So if there is any, this is their job. Let them come and de deal with anybody that is trying to hijack uh, 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 the protest. We are law abiding citizens and we are going for peaceful protests, no going back. Okay, Farouk. Um, yeah. Apart from tasking the law enforcement agencies for, uh, to ensure that the, uh, the protest is peaceful, what plans are you also making to ensure that uh, those who will follow your lead mm. in this protest are also law abiding and peaceful? That what, that's the reason why we are doing this advocacy. That's the reason why we are doing That's the reason why I'm here to tell, to send a big message to all Nigerians, anybody that is coming out, I have been doing this campaign on my TikTok and the Facebook accounts, anybody that is coming to pro, that is going to join us, even yesterday, I have to send a message. Anybody that is trying to still be caught, there is some criminal element, whatever they see a crowd, where it will be very hard for the security agency to maintain law and order there, they, use, they have to seize that opportunity and they start vandalizing and they stealing people's property. We are not here for that. We are here to demand justice. We are here to demand for our constitutional right. Because, let me cut what even caused all this hardship. Let me cut, let me judge before I even advise them as a president. Let me cut it, let me judge him by his own word. On the day of his uh, inauguration, Mr. President, he swore on this full subsidy. That what has called this all this wahala, all this hardship that we are that we are going through. He said his I'm, I cut. We command. I'm I'm cutting the Mr. President because I'm going to judge him. Mm -hmm, go ahead. Okay. We command the the, the outgoing administration in passing out the full subsidy regime which has increasingly favored the rich more than the poor. Subsidy can no longer justify it by increasing costs in the wake of drying resources. We should instead rechannel the fund into, into in infrastructure, education, healthcare, and jobs that will materially improve the life of millions. That's the word to Mr. President of Sus. Mm -hmm. So let me judge him. He said it will improve the, uh, uh, the life of millions. So it didn't improve anything. That means, Mr. President, this idea, this issue didn't work anyway. So we are asking you, with all due respect, Mr. President, I'm sending you this message with all due respect, Senator Aswaju Bola Ahmad Tunubu, GCF, GCFR, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This your idea of subsidy removal didn't work anyway. We are pleading with you to withdraw it. Let you redo the poor subsidy. And if you cannot, that means you lack the idea and the stamina to lead this country. I'm respectfully, with all due respect, advising you, if you cannot lead that Nigeria, just resign your office as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That's my formal advice. That is my formal message to the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay. Now, yeah. how do you respond to the videos that have uh, surfaced online? You, I'm, I'm sure you saw it on um, the Kakaki Social, mm. where some hoodlums yeah. were threatening people in uh, some markets uh, in Lagos mm. that they, they should not come out mm. tomorrow mm. for the protest. Forget about them. We know our constitutional right. We are fearless, totally fearless. No one can just come and just try to deceive us. So, so that means they have identified themselves. If the security agency, the police, the DSS, they are truly doing their work, doing their work, so let them go after them and arrest them. I'm a member of Bring Back Our Girls Movement. I'm proud to have a mother like a uh, former Nigerian Minister of Education, Dr. Obi Izikusile. You know, she trained us to be peerless, to, to seek for our constitutional right. I was always there when we are, when we are campaigning for the release of the Chief of Girls, you know. So I know my constitutional right. Nothing will scare, scare us, you know. So we are ready for it. I told you it's no longer even a protest. It has come to stay in Nigeria in the next 10 to 20 years to come. This is a movement, okay? We have to be fighting for our constitutional right. The God has enriched Nigeria abundantly, but very few. 
Okay, now that you have identified yourself to the authorities in, in the country, you've seen the police commissioner in the FCT, mm. you've written to the DG of the DSS, you've mm. uh, written a letter to Kayo de Agbeto, the inspector general of police, exactly. and of course you've written to the chief justice of Nigeria, yeah. Kayo de Ariwola, mm. uh, identifying yourself. Exactly. And um, according to their demands, that mm. you should come, let them know what you're doing and all of that. Exactly. How, are you, how do you intend to proceed? What's the plan for the protest tomorrow? Thank you very much. The protest, we are still mobilizing people. Anybody that is going to join us, let it be a peaceful protester. And the, I think I forgot even to answer yourself, Kelly. I didn't call myself interim national leader to, because I'm better than anybody. I'm still calling because among our, because I'm prepared for, I'm well ready for the legal consequences. We are ready to pass to meet the Nigerian government in the court of law. If they ever try to hijack this, this process, okay? That's the reason why I, we selected some people like Chief Pemi Palana to be our national legal advisor one, Barista, uh, Chief uh, uh, Abubakar Mahmoud Poma, uh, national president of the Nigerian Bar Association to be our national legal advisor two, Deji Adeyenzu, uh, human rights activist to be our national legal advisor three, uh, Barista Salomon Dalu, former Nigerian's Minister of Youth and, uh, and Sport, to be our national legal advisor, Po. And uh, finally, the human rights activist lawyer from Kano, Barista Abahikima, to be our national legal advisor, Pai. So we are ever ready. So mm. how do you proceed tomorrow? So that's it, as I told you. you you've you've to told me your, your, your four national legal advisors, yeah. Femi Falano, the Jade and Jew and all the others. Exactly. But how are you proceeding? What's the plan for tomorrow? Where are you starting from? What? Thank you very much. We have already made ourselves clear to the, to, 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 to the government. Okay? We have already told them that our, the, our marching point, our starting point will be uh, Unity Front in Abuja. That's where we are going to be gathering them before we, we, we proceed to occupy Nigeria. Uh, you, you're not going to use the Eagle Square, are you? We are going to use, but we have to point out the starting point, okay? I know what I'm doing. This is the center of unity. And this is our motto, okay? Promoting national unity toward attaining a prosperous Nigeria free of violence and bloodshed. That's our motto, okay? This is a peaceful protest. We want to have a better Nigeria. All right. I, I, I must wish you the very best in uh, your, your plans to mm -hmm. protest. But then... What kind of arrangements do you have in terms of logistics? Because it's not just about marching. You're going to have a large crowd of people exactly. uh, who are coming with you, who are marching. Are you prepared for the logistics, medicals, refreshments? Exactly. And, uh, we have all these. Even uh, we toilet have, facilities. Exactly. Thank you very much. We have all this on ground. And I'm also calling the government. Okay. Let them at least help the project. They are coming to help the government. To help the government realize its mistakes, to correct their mistakes, you know. Let them also them be even sponsor instead of harassing, intimidating, violating the constitution of the of the, of the protesters. Let them be bringing put water to the to the protest because we are Nigerians. You okay? We have all this on ground. We have our medical team. The same way we have our legal team. You know that we are consulting. Okay, we have this on ground. Okay, so uh, you said August one to tenth. Exactly. How do you plan to sustain? Exactly. This for 10 days. Exactly. For 10 days. As I told you, we were protesting for more than getting to Chibok girls. We, we used to gather for the bring, bring back our girl uh, movement. We were protesting for how many years? So I used to eat. Okay. As I, as I told you, this is more than just a protest. This is more than just more than 10 day prote uh, protest. You said it it's a movement. To in Nigeria. So you, you, you're ready to go the, the, the full length of the 10 days? My God will is, And the goal will be on our side because we are doing the right thing. See what he is doing, has been doing. They have been lying to us all. The God has enriched Nigeria with the fuel. We have to be carrying our crude oil, taking it to Europe. Then they will be importing the hazardous petro petroleum into the country. Ali Kodongote was trying his effort to change Nigeria. They were sabotaging him. This the Dr. Paruk, uh, 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 Paruk Ahmed has to come come out in the media and say and to condemn the uh, 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 the Angwa refinery. 
because they have been stealing for how many times the Amelikari has been lying to us that by the end of the year, by the end of the year, yeah, yeah, countless, that the Kaduna refinery, uh, Potapu refinery, they will start working. And the workers there, they are still receiving their salary. Which kind of country do you call Nigeria? Please and please. They have no, been deceiving us. No, we are getting tired, my brother. No, please. Farouk, yeah. ap apart from this, what, what are the other demands that your movement has? Thank you very much, my brother. Ni, as I told you, promote national unity. I was watching Ijoma Usamo. That was a day, I think last, last week, she just even, she captured some demands of the protesters. Some they were even including for the, uh, you know, the security, let the security, uh, 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 let our Nigerians have the security in the country, okay? Let the Mr. President withdraw, return the subsidy, pay the petrol, okay? And there is, I learned some people, they are even campaigning for the release of Inam Dekanu. So if the release of Inam Dekanu is going to be healed, any result. So I'm still, I'm supporting it, okay? So let it be a peaceful. Any, any mission that we are going to bring, all demands, let it be in a way that it will promote a national unity because I was in the senator that was last week. I was with the this senator that lead the northeast senator to the uh, to the attorney general of the federation, Chibla Tifabi. Me that senator in a I met him in his office and I submitted a letter to him. Okay, so if this is the case, I'm um, because the DCP Abakari is still facing trial, standing trial in the court. So if the president is going to pardon Inam Dekanu. Let Inam Dekanu and DCP Abakari be pardoned by the Mr. President so that we will promote national unity. Please and please. Okay? So that's my stand. Anything that will promote peace and unity in the country, and I, I stand for it. Okay. You, you, that's a fresh demand. That's mm -hmm. not part of the things that, that were listed mm -hmm. uh, earlier on. And the Mr. President, again, again, this insecurity... Is biting the people, especially from the north. They cannot go to farm. This bandit will come to kidnap your wife, your children, and they, they will molest her in, in your presence, you know? So let Mr. President <clears throat> provide. And, the, and this, uh, 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 the soldiers and the, the policemen, they are still campaigning for, the, for their allowances. I had even the chief of defense staff Responding to the media, this uh, chief of defense staff, uh, General Christopher Musa Gabin, that he was telling the Nigerian, based on the complaint, I had, the, at least I had it in the BBC, in the BBC news, that the soldiers have complained for the lack of their pain of their allowance. So when they were interviewing them to respond, he said they submitted to, to they submitted, they were waiting for the approval for outcomes. That I mean to indicate that we have facing three problems concerning this insecurity. Like, liking or providing them with the, with the, with, uh, with the enough weapons, with their allowance, sometimes, if, if they were even being allocated, some few people in Abuja here, they were under the SE, they will be stealing the, the, the biting. Do, do you have evidence of that? Yeah, we ha I have evidence. I have that been fighting. Some people in Abuja are stealing the, Th thank you very the much. funds it released for it the is, soldiers? It is in the history, please. Do you have evidence thank of that? Thank you very much. It's in, in the history. Let me give you an example. On, on 19 September, on 19 September 2013, I was, uh, because I used to advise the Nigerian military during the time of uh, Admiral Orasad Ibrahim at the chief of the defense staff of Nigeria. Hijirika then was the chief of army staff. And the Alice Badi was the chief of air staff. That was September, 9, 19 September 2013, before he has been promoted to the, because he retired as chief of defense staff. Some soldiers has plotted to kill, to, to, to kill me. They gave me an appointment. I was in the defense headquarters. I just saw, I was there as a guest. In fact, they gave me some money. They said, Farouk, have this money from the chief of defense staff. And they collected some of my documents because I was there on 2nd September 2013. I said, please, I give you some advice. You didn't pay me. They said, no, we will pay you. 
one Nigerian naval officer from then from the Defense and Dakota Intelligence Department, J.S. Dauda, and the Osa Fashina. Osa Fashina Nigerian Army is now Brigadier General in the Nigerian Army, is still servicing in the Nigerian Army. Osa Fashina, I still have his phone number. J.S. Dauda was Nigerian uh, Navy at the time. So the people that supported me with some money, and I have some documents. They say, Paru, we want to learn some idea from your right up. That was on 2nd <coughs> September 2013. On 16th September, I was <coughs> in the office of the Chief of Defense Staff at the middle of al Al-Assad Ibrahim, submit submitting the request demanding for, the, for my payment of 50 million naira. And then when I was coming out, I met the JS Lord. I said, please, you didn't return with my document, which you have collected on second. He said, come and collect your document on 19... On, that was on Thursday, 19 September. Mm -hmm. I went there to collect my document. Before you know it, I just saw a healer. They just say I'm under arrest. I said, for what? For helping my country? I never been to <clears throat> Defense Intelligence Agency. They took me there. God disgraced them. They said they will never detain me. They will not detain me. Because they are the one, this letter of detention looking, it looks suspicious. They have to take me back. It was already night because the time we reached the Defense Intelligence Agency, it was around five, five to six. They have to take me to this Mogadish containment, Abacha Barracks. They, they have to beg the, the, even the soldier to have me for just a night with a promise to return me back to this. But they told them they cannot release me in the night. They have to take me back. By the following day, they keep their word. They take me back to, took me back to the Penn State headquarters, where I have all the, the, the news of my arrest separate to Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Defense Staff. They have to sit down with me, begging me to pardon the, the, uh, 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 the soldier, AJS Dauda, and the Osa Pashina who betrayed me. They say, Farouk, what are even, what do you want? You okay. are part of, Fa let me ask Farouk. Farouk, give me one minute. Let Farouk. me land. Let me land. We, give me one we minute. Have to, we have to go. Okay. Let me learn, based on the question you asked. Finally, finally, Alex Bade, they didn't keep their word. They didn't pay me this 50 million naira. But when Alex Bade under Bahari administration was arranged before Justice Akon Abank, Commander Yushou Ali has to come and testify before Justice Akon Abank that he was the one used to come. Alex Bade used to steal 558 million naira at the end of every month. Main for security purpose. Commander Isha Ali testified that he was the one used to take this money, 558 million naira, monthly, to, to the others. I, I, I think, I think. Uh,